All right, let's talk about the bounding box and the format. So format is your actual size of the image stream. And if you look at your project settings, you have your full size format. This is saying my image is this big. And so when you go to write something or you go to generate something, um, that's the actual size it's gonna be. Bounding box is a little different in that bounding box can float. So if you were to create just a roto node, and then we go in and you can see now our format is defined here and our bounding box is defined here at the top right. So if we actually click in here and draw, now you can see our bounding box data has moved and it's only showing the furthest extent of pixels that actually have data. And this is a really important concept and we'll discuss this more in the next chapter, but it lets you basically limit the number of pixels that are being input into a node. And this is really important when you get into very heavy, you know, processor intensive tasks, because now that processor is only having to work, you know, maybe an order of magnitude less pixels or half of the amount of pixels. And every time you're working less pixels, it means you're going to have faster viewing times, faster caching times, and faster render times. And ultimately that lets you iterate faster. And a lot of compositing is just iteration. You know, we're, we're do, anybody can do something once. It's how fast you can do it the second, third, fourth, fifth time around where you really start to gain speed. So in this roto shape, you can see, you know, our bounding box changes when I move the shape. Now, say you have an image that has something like this, a crop also manages bounding box. So if I were to add a crop tool to this, you can see now our bounding box has jumped back out to full format. And that's because it's setting itself to the format of our image sequence as defined by our project settings. But I can now move my crop and you can see our bounding box has changed as well. And if I click off that, you can see here's where our bounding box is represented. So you can actually use this on images to do the same thing. You know, say we have our, our mountainside image over here and we're only using a little bit of it. We could actually use a crop to initially groom it down to less, you know, to a, a smaller subset of pixels. So now we're, we're only operating with considerably fewer pixels in this case. Now, this is one way to operate, but there's actually a better way. So if you go to a mask tool, as you can see here, our bounding box hasn't changed. And even though a roto shape has a much smaller bounding box, because of our mask settings, our B box is set to union. So it's taking our bounding box from our main image and the bounding box from our roto shape, and it's just combining them. But what we really want here is we want to use our bounding box from our A side input. So whenever you use mask, and inversely if you use stencil, it's the same relationship, we actually want to go and set our mask input to A. So what this does is it takes the bounding box from our roto shape and moves that into now our main image stream where we've merged together. And ultimately, again, this lets us process you know, so much faster because if we left this as it is, if we let it left it set to union, and then say we went and put a really heavy node on here, like a median blur or something like that, and we're not gonna really see the processing because I'm actually running a frame hold, but this is gonna take considerably more time to process because it, the median is actually affecting everything inside the bounding box. Whether it's black or not, it doesn't care. It's still doing the math. So that's why this is a really important setting to be aware of. And it's one of those things that most people don't realize a merge can do for you. So if you're using merges properly, you almost never have to use a crop tool anymore to reduce your pixel sizes. So we'll set that back to A. And then we're doing some work. And so our transform moves our bounding box. You know, now we actually have a bounding box that's outside of our format. This is an important thing to know too. Occasionally, if you're doing tracking, you want to, your bounding box might float outside your format box and then it'll swing back in when your track moves or the camera pans, however that works. So now we need to remove some things. So you can see this roto has its own bounding box. 
But in this case, we don't necessarily want to combine our bounding boxes again. In this case, we want to keep our bounding box from our B side because that's the only place we actually have visible pixels. The rest of this is for an alpha and there, these pixels aren't affecting anything because there is no a side, there's no B side image for them to affect. So on our stencil, we definitely want to keep our bounding box set to B and that way we're inheriting the bounding box from here. So now we have our stencil and we could go and do a little more work to actually remove this, but there's another step we can do to actually remove that as well. So now we have our, our final image or our final image that we're going to add to our main image. So if we view our main image, now you can see our bounding box has actually grown out. And again, it's set to union and it's using the full extent of both bounding boxes, but we don't want extra bounding boxes because there's we can't see it if we render it there's nothing there's no image here it is worth noting that some image sequences like exr they render the bounding box separate from the format so it is possible to have a bounding box larger than your format and that be represented in your exr image sequences but again there's just a little simple tweak we can make on the merge tool to change that we can go to our bounding box and we can set it to b so now we're only pulling the bounding box from our original image. And as long as we're not manipulating this image with a transform or a scale corner pin, this is how we want this to be because now any extra bounding box we created while creating our assets is automatically stripped away and we don't have to go and then put another crop downstream of this tool or a reformat as some people do. So traditionally, I see a lot of artists do this where we have this kind of extra bounding box that we don't need and then maybe they're adding some more tools some filters making some you know lens looks but again those tools are processing on this so i see a lot of people go and add a crop and the crop takes it away and they'll set it to reformat so it'll actually be the true bounding box or you can use a reformat node which functionally does the same thing in this case but again it's really unnecessary because as long as you set your bounding box management you don't have to do that work. And this works with multiple, you know, you can, you can do this across a huge gamut of tools. So say we're actually going to use a couple different pieces from here. Say we want to use these mountains over here in a different spot. We could actually fork those over. So what we'll do is we'll create another merge. We'll set it to mask. We want it to be set to a, and we'll create a new roto shape. We'll connect our roto shape to our A input, connect our mask to our B input. We'll go ahead and view this, and then we'll just roughly grab these mountains. Actually, maybe we just want the sky here. So we'll delete this shape. We'll draw a new shape. We'll grab some sky. So now you can see we've isolated our sky and we've shrunk that bounding box. And then what we want to do is we'll actually merge those together. And this is the working pre-multiplied and additive. It's better to add your additional imagery together first before applying it to your main image sequence. And this is because of bounding box management. Because now you can see we have our two different images and instead of having a full bounding box frame, now we only have, you know, maybe a third of our bounding box represents our format. So you can see our image here and then we can put it on top and then say we need to move it around. So we would move it here and then we would go in and we'd add another stencil. And I actually have these set up as hotkeys so I can hit tab and type mask and it'll give me a merge set up with all of these settings by default which is a huge time saver for having to set up nodes every time. You can also do this via the tool sets menu bar. So we've got our stencil. We'll go back and we'll look at our original image. So we just want to cut out these trees. We'll just do this roughly. So now we're cutting out our trees there. So you can see we have our two images in their bounding boxes and then we merge that back over. 
and then we can go in we can make some modifications if we need to to sort of clean this up but that's the basics of bounding box management and that's kind of how bounding boxes and format work together and how managing your bounding box can really improve the efficiency of your scripts